Hey, good morning. It is Thursday, and it is time for another installation of Tina's Unfinished Objects. But I have good news to report today because my unfinished objects have been making progress, mostly due to me. <laughs> I've been putting time in. Crazy that, isn't it? Um, I have mastered, or at least I feel like I've almost mastered the clones knot. Uh, I've tried it a couple of different ways. I've come to the one that feels comfortable to me. I have no idea if it is a standard operating procedure, but it seems to help me hold the tightness that I would prefer. And I'm going to like, see those little knots there. The goal is at least in my mind to keep them tight and also to not have loose. I'm going to show you up close here and I may flip you around to help with this right there. Oh, there's a good example right there. See how the chain goes all the way up to the knot and then comes out the other side of the knot. The knot is tight and firm. That is at least my desired clones knot. And in my view of looking at old pieces, that is pretty much what the knot looks like. Now, let me look through my, cause I have a couple that I don't like. As opposed to that, I don't love usually the ones I work on in the middle of the night. All right, here, here's a, let me, let me pull that up, tug it up. Here's an example of one I don't like. See that little open space right before you go into the knot? That's an undesirable clones knot, or at least one that I'm trying not to repeat too often. And the key to that is the last chain before I do the clones knot isn't tight enough. Now, the price you pay for not having a tight, for having a tight chain right before you go into the clones knot is that um, it's really hard to get your hook in to secure that knot. So there is a price and I've got a couple of tricks I've worked out to solve that problem. Um, and then the other thing that is undesirable for me, let me see if I can find one, because I have a few, but it's not, in the beginning it was like every stinking clones knot would be loose and sloppy and um, have that neck that was loose. There, here is, I'm pulling it up so you can see it better. Uh, see that wob see that piece of, of thread hanging out of the knot? I call that the uh, fluffy, like dust bunny clones knots. And that one's better than most, and I've left it in. This is a finished flower. But I, for a while there, all of my clones knots were like that, and I didn't like it. I have standards, clearly. And getting done does not supersede those standards. So I'm going to show you my technique. Um, the best I can. I don't know how it's going to work on camera, but I'm going to do the best I can so you can see how I am doing my clones knots. Now, if you know clones knots and I'm doing it all wrong, do let me know. Um, this is the method I've come to to give me a satisfactory knot. Maybe uh, my expectations are too high or maybe, um, maybe I've fudged it and gotten what is desirable the wrong way. I don't know. But I'm going to show you what I'm doing and you let me know. All right, so the way you do a clones knot, or at least the way I am, is I'm going to chain four. And I do this quite firmly. One, two, three, four. And see how that's quite tight? I'll, I'll show you some tricks if, this, if I can't get the hook back in later. And then I'm going to do the clones knot. And the way you do the clones knot is, is you wrap, turn your entire hook around, wrap the other direction, turn your entire hook around, wrap, hook around, wrap, hook around. I do this 12 times. Hook around, hook around, hook around. And of course I've lost count, so I'm gonna do it until my knot looks big enough. Around, 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 multiple times. And that looks about big enough. Hopefully it's around 12. And then I'm going to grab the thread and draw it right through this. Uh, if those of you that have done um, uh, noops before, it'll feel a lot like that through the whole thing. And then what I'm doing, and I don't believe this is standard, is I'm going to run a, just a short chain stitch right there. And this helps me hold my clones knot. And then I'm going to do a second slip stitch by poking into my last, my fourth chain down at the bottom. And this is tricky because you purposefully want this to be tight. And sometimes this hook head will not go through. And so it takes a bit of a fiddle 
Oh, have I made it? No. But it looks like I get to show you my trick that I figured out pretty quickly. Oh, I think I've got it this time, though. Let's push that through there. My vision is impeded. Oh, there I'm through. Through there, and another slip stitch. So another slip stitch, and that gets that clone's knot on, folded over so that it sticks out on the point. So there's my knot. Now I'm going to chain four quite tightly. Notice how I'm pulling this tight. Four, and then connect it through the middle of the next uh, petal on my rows. So through there. Oops. And slip stitch. There we go. And there is my clone's knot. Now if you look at the previous one, this is an example of what you don't want. See how that's looser there? I'm going to pull this back and I'll redo this one. This is too much for my tolerance level. But you do that around each of the petal lobes on the rose edge and then across bridging each larger petal all the way around. So chain four, clones knot, rotation 12 times, slip stitch through the clones knot, anchor the anchor the clones knot down back down on the base like you do a pico and then chain four and join in the thing and that is how i am doing my clones knots let me know what you think have you done these before if you haven't give them a try they are challenging but fun that twirly thing is quite exciting it's fun to do because it's a very odd stitch but i'm i'm digging it i'm now this is my last I believe this is my sixth rows to put the clones knots around and then I'm going to move on to the petals and the uh, paisleys and then I'll be ready to join again. Okay, just another short one for me, but this is what I'm, I'm all on, focusing on my clones lace right now. So um, I've even had trouble because I like am supposed to be bridging this gap between new projects and old projects. I'm having so much fun figuring out these clones knots now that I have been neglecting my Amelia R's needle lace. So uh, that coupled with cleaning house and so on and so forth that I've uh, really been doing a whole lot of clones lace. And that's kind of what's so cool about unfinished objects, right? Is this thing was put on hold for a long time. I was in a space in my head where I couldn't cope or I couldn't figure out how to be successful on those clones knots, and I couldn't figure out, it was too challenging in my brain to join these together. But all it took is a little time, and then a revisit, and a revisit, and I think this is the third revisit, isn't it? So I, I think it's a lesson for me that all those projects that I have on hold because they provided some sort of physical or mental dilemma that all I've got to do is re-pick them up and re-pick them up and not leave them abandoned because it's probably an opportunity to figure out the thing that got them put there in the first place. All right, that's it for me today. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I'm hoping I'm grabbing a balance between how to and just the fact that I'm trying to get through these unfinished objects. Um, I haven't heard from anybody lately. Do we have any unfinished objects out there that's getting done? Let me know. Or even if they've been picked up, or even if you found some that you didn't realize you had. Send me photos. Send them either at the Twisted Pico Facebook page, if you know me at my personal Facebook page, or you can email me at tina at blacksheepatarenko.com. Um, I'm going to put that down in the info below so that you send me your unfinished objects in whatever um, state of completion they are in. Give me a little info about them, and I'll talk about it on our next episode. All right. Bye.